Hello, hi, welcome to Angloscope with Valerie Marzac. Let's speak English. Come on, you can do it. Hello, welcome back to English Made Easy. This is going to be the English version. The French version will be available shortly. Today, as promised, we're going to speak about the present perfect. Before we do, our small challenge from last time was what's the meaning of it's a piece of cake? Well, it simply means it's easy. So you can say either it's easy or it's a piece of cake. Both are synonymous. Now, remember last time we talked about the preterite tense, a tense that we use to speak about an action which is a point in time in the past. Today, with the present perfect, we're going to see something completely different. Don't try to compare English tenses with those of your own language. It just won't work. So let's have a look together. The present perfect. First, its name. Its name has the present in it although it is a past tense. If we go back to our timeline with future, present and past, we see that the present perfect is a point which starts in the past and goes on until the present time. The present perfect is going to be used usually in three different cases. Number one, the action begins in the past and goes on in the present. Example, he has been on the phone for two hours. This means that the person started speaking on the phone in the past, but is going on in the present. In this instance, we can only use the present perfect. If I said to you, he was on the phone for two hours with the preterite tense, this means that the action is over, that the person is no longer on the phone. But he has been on the phone for two hours means it's still going on now. So this is the first instance when we must use the present perfect. We also use the present perfect when we are given a fact, a given fact, which means something which is true until now. Example, they haven't visited Japan. If these people haven't been to Japan, it's true till now, it was true in the past and it is true as well until the present time. Maybe they will go later, but for the time being, they haven't visited Japan. Third situation. If something has just happened, it is still linked with the past, although we are speaking about something which is at the same time present. Let me give you an example to make it more clear. Help! That man has just stolen my handbag. Here I am and I see a man running and he's just stolen, just taken my handbag and something has just happened. So an event in the past is linked with my present. Try to view this again because next we're going to see how to form the present perfect and of course it's going to be an exercise. See you in a minute. Back. Now, let's see how to form the present perfect. It will be quite easy for regular verbs. We use have or has for he, she and it. Plus our verb. And if it's a regular verb, we're going to simply add ed at the end. So basically how to form it is to use have or has plus the verb, plus the past participle. For regular verbs, the past participle will be exactly the same as the preterite. So here we have the verb to decide, regular verb, 
decided in the preterite tense, decided as well in the past participle. For irregular verbs, there is no magic. You will have to learn the past participle. So, last time I asked you to find a list of irregular verbs on the internet. A list of about 75 to 80 verbs, roughly. You will have to learn the three forms for each verb. Example with this one, seen, which is the past participle of the verb to see. So what you will find on the list is to see in the infinitive form, saw, which is the preterite, and seen, which is the past participle. And we need the past participle to use the present perfect. Let me remove this. So if we have an irregular verb, we'll say, for example, he hasn't seen the Eiffel Tower. I'm using have, but because it's a third person singular, it becomes has. It's also a negative form, so I've had it not, which I've contracted. He hasn't seen the Eiffel Tower. Instead of I want to use an affirmative sentence or a statement, I will say he has seen the Eiffel Tower. Ready for the exercise? Here is what you should do. You should have in front of you the list of irregular verbs. And now, Let's try the exercise together. Sentence number one. We to be to Australia twice. How do we form our present perfect? We use have. And we need to use to be in the past participle. If you check the past participle on your irregular verbs, you will find been. So we'll say, we have been to Australia twice. This is what we call a given fact, which is why we need to use the present perfect. Number two, the cat, to catch a mouse. I'm looking at my cat right now, and I have to use the present perfect and say, the cat has just caught a mouse. This is an event which has just happened, which is why I need to use the present perfect. The cat has. Why has? Remember, because it's the third person singular. Has just or has caught. Caught is the past participle of the verb to catch, which you can find on your list of irregular verbs. Sentence number three. Sorry, Mrs. Smith just to leave her office. Mrs. Smith, third person singular, I will use has. And now I need to use to leave in the past participle. If you check on your list, you will find left. So the sentence will be, sorry, Mrs. Smith has just left her office. This is something which has, which has, sorry, just happened. Therefore, it's still linked with the present. And so we must use the present perfect. Sentence number four. He to be on the phone for two hours. Again, it's a third person singular. He has. I need my verb in the past participle, which is been. He has been on the phone for two hours. Last sentence. She to live in Chicago since 2001. Again, Third person, she has, 
To live is a regular verb, so we just need to remove the to and add ed at the end. She has lived in Chicago since 2001. Remember that next time we'll see when to use the preterit tense and when to use the present perfect. But first, I must make sure that you understand when to use the present perfect and that you can make a sentence and also learn the regular verbs. There are a few tricks about the present perfect. Usually in a sentence you will find words such as yet or not yet or just. If it's yet or not yet it means it's probably a given fact. If it's just it means it's something which is still linked with the present tense. You may also find for and the length of time. For example, for two hours. And you may also find since with a date. Since 2001. Small remark here. For is used with a length of time and since with a date. Try to remember this. That's it for the present perfect today. Please, please, please don't panic. Try to view this video several times. Next time, remember, we'll try to see together when to use the preterite tense and when to use the present perfect. Before I leave you for today, a small, tiny challenge for next time. What's the meaning of Never mind. Never mind is used a lot in English, so it's good to know what it means. So I'll see you next time with how and when to use the preterite tense and the present perfect. For those of you who are French speakers, the French version will be available shortly. Maybe tomorrow, as I can, I'll do my best. In the meantime, see you soon. Don't forget to double check this and to learn your irregular verbs. Take care. Bye for now.